we can hear me this morning. All right. Okay. Uh, just want to say hello. God bless you. I'm uh, glad to be here, and um, I'm thankful for Philip um, and Roger. What they're doing down there in Lake Charles, and and, and I just want to share them having that heart to do that is really the heart of a pastor, the heart of finishing the job. So, and you really think about that. My, my hearing aid could be causing problems here, but but you you really think about that. That's what God, you know, a lot of people, a lot of Christians, and I'm, this is not my sermon, you start well, but do you finish well? And that, that's a symbolic type. As believers, that's not my sermon, but you need to finish well. And I really appreciate that about Philip, that analogy there about them going in there and finishing that job and helping that lady. So, are we having some sound issues? Is that okay, or is that just me? Microwave. Pull the mic away. Okay. Is that better? All right. Thank you so much. So, I was used to a different type mic when I, years ago when I preached, but uh, uh, I'm real thankful for Philip, and it's an honor again to share uh, this morning, and um, I just want to make one comment here before I get started, then we'll pray. I... Um, with the Lord a few weeks ago, and I ended up having the COVID, Debbie and I, and we, and I actually was going to preach the same sermon, kind of modified it a little bit, but I just want to say this this morning before I get started, a few thoughts as I start this morning, we look at this world, and we see, I'm going to be preaching on a heavenly perspective, we see a world that's anti-God, things that are going on, sin the bounds, the love of many are waxing cold towards the Lord. And it's why we as a church must be wholeheartedly committed to Christ. And I believe most all of you know that. To live holy in this present world. So my sermon this morning is kind of a challenging sermon. Um, to stay the course and not grow weary in well-doing. What's the scripture say? For we shall reap if we faint not. And what's great, what I love about V Village Bible Church is I see a pastor, a praying church, a missions church, a blessed church is a missions church, but mainly a praying church. As an example right in front of us, Pastor Philip, Melissa, their family, and what they're doing for their kingdom. And I see Sister Dottie back here. I mean, I, you know, a lot of people, Philip told me one time, she's a legend. <laughs> I mean, she is, uh, being a mission, what she's done for so many years, Howard, Bonnie, what they've done as missionaries, Roger and Ellen, you know, that's a big deal. Think about that. And being here, uh, it should encourage us. And I'm just thankful for what we do in the kingdom and what the leaders in this church are doing for the kingdom. So if you're not praying for your pastor daily and... Uh, you need to come to the altar and pray through this morning because you got a great pastor. You got one in a million, one in a billion, I would say. He is a good, godly man. First, what I see in him, he loves God with all his heart. And he loves his family. And he loves the church. You know, that's the right order. Think about it. Love God, love your family, love the church. And I know he loves you. So let's just read the scripture. I want you to turn to Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. And uh, do we have a heavenly perspective this morning? Uh, I, I go over my sermons every morning. I was actually preaching to my cat this morning. He was over there looking at me. It's kind of funny. Old George, he got, a, he, he got a heavenly perspective. So I'll try to go over my sermons uh, two or three times, but um, I just want to pray by the Spirit we'll get it right. But um, I'm going to be reading out of the King James. There's a couple word differences here. I do love the ESV, so I apologize for that apologize for that this morning but Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 it says here if you then be risen with Christ seek those things which are above set your affection seek on things on high and not on the earth excuse me I said that wrong if you then be risen with Christ seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth 
at the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above and not on the earth. I think in uh, verse 2 it says, set your mind on things above and not on the earth. And I believe in verse 1 it says, you are risen with Christ uh, too. So think about that this morning. Um, where's our mindset spiritually? And I believe most everybody here is pretty mature in God. And I'm sure there's some new Christians or some here that... Uh, possibly need to get closer to the Lord. And that's kind of who I'm preaching to. But I'm preaching to all of us that we, and even myself, where is our mindset spiritually? Is our, It's against our nature, the flesh nature, to keep, he keep, it keeps us, and the devil keeps us from having a heavenly perspective. So what was Paul telling the Colossian church to get it right? And you know the story? Most of it there, there was a lot of narcissism, narcissism and stuff going on in the church. It says here the Colossian heresy, and you must know, most know this, was described as the Colossian heresy. It's difficult to describe, to describe. It was probably a corruption of Christianity with elements of mystical and legalistic Judaism, perhaps combined early Gnosticism. But Paul was telling them to have a better understanding of Jesus, to walk with the Lord, to have a relationship with Jesus. Before I go any farther, I just want to pray. Amen. Father, we bless your name. We love you. You're so good. Thank you for the worship this morning, the worship team. Thank you, Lord, that we can truly praise your name and that you are worthy to be praised. We love you so much. I ask you to be with me this morning. Only speak what you would want to speak and not keep. I pray you will move by your Holy Spirit. Give us ears to hear what your word says. That the word doesn't come back void on our hearts. That we will all be ministered to in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. So, Paul had a tough situation there. And in that first verse, it says, If you then be risen with Christ. Be risen one of my commentaries, R.C. Sproul, a late great theologian, said, Note the parallel statements of the fact in this section. Believers have died in Christ. They have been raised with him. They're with Christ in heaven. They will be with him at his return, and they have put on the old self, the old man, and they have put on the new self, which is Christ. Paul's instructions for behavior come only after his description of redemption that God has richly bestowed upon his people. When you are born again, you are risen with Christ. And God's called us to walk in resurrection life. Amen? He's called us to that. So where is our mindset? You know, so many things keep our mind off the Lord daily. Entertainment. Uh, you know, there's always something. Can you agree with me on that? But we must be focused on the Lord and I don't want to get ahead of myself here. I like what C.S. Lewis said. He said, aim at heaven, and you will get earth thrown in. Aim at earth, you will get neither. Think about that this morning. But we have been risen with Christ, so we must seek those things which are above. A couple of scriptures here before I get going. Sorry, I'm a little nervous. I hadn't preached in six months. I used to do it every week for nine years. <laughs> but... We'll get rolling here, but I just want you to get the word here. We are risen with Christ. Do we have that heavenly, eternal perspective? Colossians 2, 12. I'll get you to turn to some in a minute, but this morning I'll just go through a few. We've been buried with him in baptism, where also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. Jesus said in John 5, 21, For as the Father has raised up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. The Spirit of God, you know this, is birthed in us to quicken us in him. John 5, 24 says, Verily, verily, which is truly, truly, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life, shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. What a blessing. You know, I was, uh, we were in this class this morning, Brother Howard does a great job at J.D. Ferrara. I was telling, uh, uh, I think, Tim, like, oh, i got to follow that guy. I mean, it's, if, you're, if you ain't in Sunday school class, you need to come. You're missing it. But it was really good. And, and, and Brother Ferrara shared that point, talking about Romans. You know, we have been risen with Christ. 
We'll pass from death unto life. You know, it's, it's real, church. It's a real gospel. It's a true gospel. And, and you know, I, my purpose is to try to keep us, let us not go through the motions. And we can't. Uh, sometimes I, I've seen people just play church. And I'm not saying you do that, but we cannot go through the motions. We must have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm trying to get ahead of myself there, but I like what Romans 8, 9, and turn to Romans 8, 9, and 10. I'll let you, uh, we'll go through that one, but we've been risen with Christ. The next thought will be seek those things which are above, which would be the heavenly perspective. We've got to remember this in Romans 8, verse 9. Praise the Lord. I like what Jonathan Edwards said. He said, the way to heaven is ascending. We must be content to travel uphill, though it be hard and tiresome and contrary to the natural bias of our flesh. Romans 8, 9, and 10, it says, But are you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. So be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. But of the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the spirit that dwelleth in you. And then once we've been born again, we know that been risen. We've been risen to walk in resurrection life. And how do we get grow up in Christ? Is that sanctification process? And we know that prayer, reading God's word. Staying active in church. And I'm, and I'm going to share it again. I'm, I'm praising um, Village Bible Church. You know, if you're not in the Zoom prayer meeting, and I saw some of you can't technically wise, and that's understandable. It's uh, very encouraging. And uh, I love it. And, you know, God's going to move in the church that's praying. And I see it. Just what little time Debbie and I and Rachel have been here. And uh, really blessed. Praise the Lord. Let me go on here. We've been risen with Christ. As we should all know, it's, I believe, in, here at Bell of Church, it's only because we were raised up in Christ Jesus, being born of the Spirit of God, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, we will be able to seek the Lord. I mean, we can't do it. We can't seek the Lord. And that's my next point this morning. Are we seeking the Lord continually in our life? Again, I challenge you this morning, continually seek those things which are above. I'm going to touch on both this morning, but... Seek those things which are above. There's a lot of seek quotes in Scripture. So I thought about reading them all, but I think I would probably get up and walk out the door. But, uh, but 271 about seeking the Lord. So I think God wants us to seek the Lord. Amen. But he said, Jesus said in Matthew 6, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. David said in Psalm 27, One thing I have desired of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, and to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. And we know David, the Bible says that he was a man after God's own heart. But I like what that verse says here in Psalm 27, verse 4, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. You know, he had a heart for God, David. Think about that. He had a heart for the Lord. Think about him out there uh, before he became king, and then he lost it all. But he, he'd been through some heavy trials, and he, he'd done some things that weren't good, but yet he, he prayed to the Lord. You know, you think about out there in the sheep coat with all the sheep playing that harp and singing to the Lord. He has a heart for God, and I love it. If you look down to Psalm 27, verse 8, when thou saidest, seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. Seek the Lord. Seek him. As it says in the scripture, again, Colossians 3, if you then be risen with Christ. But you can't seek the Lord if you hadn't been born again. Now, I don't know if there's anybody here that don't know Jesus as their Lord or Savior, or you're coming to church and playing church and really never been committed. Today is your day in Jesus' name. That's what the scripture says. The word doesn't come back void. If you then be risen with Christ, you must be born again. Again, seek those things 
which are above. I'm going to get on to that here. More seek verses. Jesus said, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. And everyone that asketh receiveth. Remember that. He, he desires us to seek him. And another seek scripture, again, I could go all day. I'm not going to read 271 scriptures on seek. But I think about Hosea in the Old Testament. We know the story. Some of us do. You know, he was trying to get the children of Israel to repent and turn back to the Lord. But that famous scripture in Hosea 10, 12, he says, Sow yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord. You know, it's high time to seek the Lord. I know most of us are, but I just, I just want to say keep on keeping on in the faith. It's a challenging word to keep on keeping on. Seek the Lord. And I like this verse here, till he come and rain righteousness upon you. Till he rain righteousness upon you. We know righteousness means right standing with God. And I got to thinking about that in a funny analogy. I said, I want him to monsoon righteousness upon me. Amen. I want him to monsoon it, that latter rain of his spirit, to seek those things which are above. And uh, again, are we seeking continually? I challenge you this morning. Are we seeking continually? Seek those things which are above. Above. That's my next thought here. Try to go quickly. Remember years ago, uh, uh, I used to play basketball, men's league basketball with some guys. I do miss that, but it was quite funny. I uh, played with some guys, and some of them were saved, some of them weren't. But I remember this one guy come up to me. He knew I was a believer. He wasn't. And he said, his wife was a Christian. He said, Keith, my wife is no, she is so heavenly minded, she's no earthly good. And I'm like, really that's that's really interesting and uh i was a young christian i really didn't know how to react to it but he when he said that i mean she's just on me all the time i mean you know you're i'm going to hell you know you can't do you don't need to do this you don't need to do that that's what he say and i'm like oh my well it appears to me she was religious minded instead of heavenly minded she but uh, it was quite interesting i don't know what happened about the situation i quit playing ball with him but we need to be heavenly minded. We can get in religion in our thoughts and our mind and just go through the motions, but he told me some stories, and I never had a chance to talk to her. Of course, I was a young Christian trying to figure it out myself, but, you know, I believe that you can be so heavenly minded that you are earthly good. Amen? In Christ Jesus, because he's changed us. Sometimes we're the only Christ people will ever see is us living it out and walking it out. For him, in a story, and I, I'll, I'll, I'll be guilty of this, and then, uh, I remember Debbie and, I, Debbie and I had been married what, a couple months. We went to visit some family in Arkansas, and uh, of course, most of my family weren't at the time serving the Lord, but I'll make a long story short. She came to me, and after about 30 minutes we'd been there, we pulled up and been there a while. She came to me and said, Keith, you're going to... You need to stop just hammering them like you do. Tell them they're going to hell. Tell them not to do this. Tell them not to do that. You know, she was right. I was being so religious and not loving them. She said, you need to love them. How can all, Jesus said, how can all men know that you're my disciples? Is that you what? Have love one towards another. I, all of y'all could probably repeat that, but I think about that too. So seek those things which are above. The heavenly perspective. Luke 12 Jesus said, but rather you seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom, the kingdom of God, which is the heavenly kingdom. Amen. Turn to Ephesians chapter 1, uh, verse 3 through 5. So, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. We must have, seek those things which are above. This morning. I get ahead of myself a little bit. I got a quote here before we read that scripture. Let me just read that scripture first. Ephesians 1, 3 through 5. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. 
Paul said in him we move and breathe and have our being in Acts 17. So he has called us into heavenly places in Christ Jesus and has blessed us with all spiritual blessings if we desire to do it. What do we do? By reading God's word and praying and seeking his face and doing his will in our lives. It's what he's called us to do. And I think about another quote. I'm a quote man. You probably notice it. But N.T. Wright said, after Jesus' resurrection, Jesus looked forward to heaven. You know, at the right hand of the Father, that scripture, where Christ seek those things which are above, where Christ sits, sitteth on the right hand of God. But he said this, knowing Jesus would soon enough ascend there, so should we, recognizing that our citizenship is in heaven. To emphasize that even more, Paul added the phrase, sitting at the right hand of God, this phrase, particularly in the allusion to Psalm 110, focuses attention on the sovereign rule which Christ now exercises in our life. So think about that, seated at the right hand of God. You remember the story about Stephen when he was stoned, uh, uh, stoned to death for preaching the gospel. When he was dying, he looked up to heaven and he could see God the Father and Jesus at the right hand of the Father, seated at the right hand of God. You know, Colossians 1 again says, this phrase refers to the very authority of Jesus over the world about which Paul was telling. He was trying to tell them that Jesus has the authority, not your religious Gnosticism and foolishness that they were doing in the church. It says there, the Christian life must be lived with abiding confidence in a submission to the Lordship of Christ. Are we submitting to the Lordship of Christ this morning? Praise the Lord. Let me go on quickly. Um, uh, I told somebody, come, let's come here and preach sometime or come to our church. We've got a great preacher, Brother Philip. He really, I love the way Philip does his notes and how we do it on the sermons. It's so good. Sorry I didn't do that today. But I told him, I said, you need to come here, Pastor Philip, preach. But, you know, come here, we preach some Sunday. I'll preach two or three hours for you. You know, he goes, well, forget that. I'm just kidding. But, so I might be a little longer than him trying to get it done here. But think about it here. We're going to go on to pass these scriptures. There's kind of a remember what I've said. We have been born again. We've been risen with Christ to seek him, to seek those things which are above. If you're not born again, you can't seek God except seek them to be born again. Let's look at Colossians 3 verse 2. It says, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. In the ESV it says, set your mind on things above above and i love that so much paul here makes it a command it's a really a command here paul says set your mind on the heavenly the spiritual mind well how do we do it how do we have a spiritual mind and uh he said set our minds on the heavenly Let, let's look at that not an earthly but a heavenly you know i think about the scripture and i'm not going to read it in first corinthians chapter 15 where uh paul was talking about uh, the first man of the earth is earthy. The second man is the Lord with heaven. He's talking about Adam. Then he's talking about Jesus. But he talks about us later on in that verse. He says, as you shall bear the image of the earthly, you shall bear the image of the heavenly. And you think about that. He's talking about our walk with him. Not saying we're gods or whatever. We're not. But Christ in you, the hope of glory is what the scripture says. Christ in you, the hope of glory. What's Christian mean? What's it mean? You know. It means Christ-like. Again, amen. Let me go on here. I got ahead of myself a little bit. Have our minds set on heavenly things. But I want you to turn to Romans chapter 12. It's familiar scripture. How do we do this? The answer is, like Jeopardy, the answer is, one and so many other verses other than this, we must yield to him. Set your mind on things above and not on things on the earth. It's in Romans chapter 12, verse 1. He says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren. I'm reading from the King James, be a little bit different. I beseech you, Paul says, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. 
There's a lot there in them two scriptures. But we've got to sacrifice ourself, our bodies, our life to Christ, holy. But in that verse there, in verse 1, he says, Brethren, by the mercies of God. You know, God is so mercy. It's been an old song we used to sing called Mercy Rewrote My Life. Mercy Rewrote My Life. I could have fallen, my soul cast down, but mercy rewrote my life. If you're born again today, mercy, God's mercy rewrote your life. And it's awesome. But he says, by the mercies of God, it's God's mercy. He loves us so much that he sent his own son to come down to save us. How exciting that is. To have fellowship with me. Me, Keith Hogan, a hillbilly from northeast Arkansas. Praise the Lord. And that's a big deal. I mean, to me, I don't know about you, but we should be excited in our faith. Amen. Excited what God's doing in our life. Excited what God's doing in this church. Because he loves you. And he loves you so much. Sorry I got off track there, but I, I just love him so much. But that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service and be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God well that's part of that sanctification process that needs to come I like what David said in Psalm 51 he said he restoreth my soul he's trying to change us to be more like him daily if you're not changing to be more like Jesus daily you know you need to pray pray through be transformed. Desire this. And the battles will come in that. Philippians 2, 5, he says, Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Ephesians 4, uh, verse 23, he says, Be you renewed in the spirit of your mind. And my next thought here is Ephesians 4, 20, for your conversation is in heaven. So if we're seeking the Lord, we've been risen with him, seeking those things which are on high, being transformed he will transform our thoughts to give him glory in our conversation. Where's your conversation? Think about that. Are you thinking about heavenly things? Talking about heavenly things? But I like what Paul said here again, the great apostle, Ephesians 4.20, for our conversation is in heaven, from whence we also look to the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Peter said it in 1 Peter 1.15, but he has called you as holy, so be ye holy in all manner, Conversation, for it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And, you know, through all this, God's calling us in Romans chapter 12 to die to self, follow him in the sanctification process. And I really just can't seem to bring it out today, possibly. That's kind of a, a week of the week thing. I know, I know when I used to pastor, I used to do two or three weeks uh, things uh, sermons like Philip which is so good it makes the church grow but I think about that it's a command here by Paul we are believers and desire to be cha changed and to be transformed and to be more like Jesus again in my final application here living the heavenly life so living for Christ and bringing forth fruit unto him is transformed us to be a witness to this world you know if we're not living it how can we Tell it. Amen? Christ in our life. As I finish up here, remember some points. Again, we're risen with Christ. Applications here. We seek him which is above, things which are above the heavenly, which we lead, we, which lead our minds and hearts to be transformed in his image, leads us to being Christ-like. Jesus in Matthew 5, 14, let, or let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. It's in a walk with the Lord. And again, we must, as we go through all this, we must not faint. Colossians 2 says, faint not, for our light affliction is but for a moment. You know, as we press in towards the Lord, we're going to have battles. We're going to have trials. We're going to have tribulation. But he's called us to walk in the Spirit. In John 6, 33, it is the Spirit again that quickeneth the flesh, profiteth nothing. Jesus said the words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The little thought I put here says, living the heavenly life again by walking in the Spirit. We must walk in the Spirit and let her light so shine. 
and uh, Philippians 2.15, that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom you what? Shine as lights. So as we look at this world and, you know, we, you just see it. You know, you can look at Washington. I mean, we got to let our lights shine, church. I challenge you. Be more like Jesus than you ever have in your whole life. Seek his face, desire him more than anything in your life. Praise the Lord because he is so good and he loves. He's called us to a high calling. And I'm so thankful. Proverbs 4.18 says, But the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth what? More and more unto that perfect day. More and more. Are you shining more and more? Or are you shining less and less? Check your heart this morning. And a couple more thoughts, and I'm going to let you go. Um, I remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the book of Daniel. You know, they truly sacrifice their self. You know the story? They wouldn't bow down to Nebuchadnezzar and his idols. Nebuchadnezzar, in a rage, threw them in the furnace, the fiery furnace. And my thought on that is they obeyed God. They didn't care. They sought the Lord. That could, hopefully it won't. That could possibly come to us. But even in trusting the Lord, and I, I think about that fiery furnace incident in two ways. As we press on to seek the Lord, Satan is going to work hard to defeating you and taking you down. But I like what they did. They didn't care. They were in a fiery furnace. Sometimes we go through the fiery furnace of affliction uh, when we try to be transformed by the ruin of our minds. But I like that scripture, what it says, Jesus was in the furnace with him. Amen. That third. What did Nebuchadnezzar say? I see a man in there and he looks like the son of God. He is with you through your trials and through your battles. Praise the Lord. Remember, being and seeking those things which are above, walking in the spirit, praying the Lord Jesus helps us to do it no matter what we're going through, no matter what trials we might come to. I shared faint not. Trust the Lord. Jesus is our Lord. He is the bread from heaven, and he loves us so much. And as I finish here again, where are you at this morning in Proverbs 4.18? Are you shining more and more, or are you shining less and less for Christ? I'll read that scripture again. But the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more unto that perfect day. Jesus' return, or when we make that, we die and go to heaven if we're born again. Again, set your mind on things above, church, and the Lord will transform your life into his image through that death to self message, a likeness to help us transform this world for Christ. He wants to transform us now so we can transform this world for him. Matthew Henry said this, He whose head is in heaven need not fear to put his feet into the grave. Again, no matter where you're at in your life, no matter what you're doing, I challenge you this morning, if you then, we should sing a song, if you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, set your affection on things on high and not on the earth, for ye are dead. And your life is hid with Christ who is our God. We shall appear, we shall appear with him in glory. We'll appear with him in glory. Isn't it exciting? Sorry about the song. I was, I was a song leader preacher through the years. But I will sing one more with you at the end. It's kind of a repentive song. But think about that this morning. I got one more quote and I'll let you go. I try not to be a long-winded preacher. Charles Spurgeon said this, There are no crown wearers in heaven who were not cross bearers below. Amen. And I want to teach, sing this song. I know you know it. And I want it to be your prayer and your desire. And if some of you this morning are struggling in your hearts, you need them to have Jesus more in your life, you need to be born again. I know there's people here, you ladies, Sister Melissa and uh, Howard and uh, those can pray with you, Tim, uh, David, wherever he's at, back in, pray with you uh, to be born again and, and pray with you. If you're struggling this morning, I know they're here to pray. There's probably more I'm not familiar with. 
with Robert, but I think about this song, and some of I'm going to sing it, and then I'll dismiss in prayer. Uh, it goes to be like Jesus, to be like Jesus. All I ask is to be like Him, all all through life's journey from earth to glory. All I ask is to be like Him. I'm going to sing it. If you know it, sing it with me. To be like Jesus. To be like Jesus. Let it be your prayer. All I ask is to be like him all through life's journey from earth to glory. All I ask is to be like him. I know you know it, don't you? He goes, you don't? He goes, to be like Jesus. Sing it, sing it with me, and then I'll dismiss. To, let it be your prayer. To be like Jesus. To be like Jesus. All I ask is to be like him. All through life's journey. From earth to glory. All I ask is to be like him. Let that be your prayer. Father, we love you this morning. I thank you for the opportunity just to share, just the honor to be in this church and just share a few words. We just love you this morning. I pray for there be anyone here this morning that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, that they will come to know you, Lord, this morning, Lord God. We thank you for your kindness, your mercy, your grace. We thank you, Lord, that you are just so good to give us the opportunity to save us and to change us, to be able to serve you. What such an honor. And that you called us to be kings and priests. And that's, oh, we're so unworthy, Lord. I just worship you this morning for that. And Father, I thank you for Village Bible Church, everyone here, the leaders, Pastor Philip, Sister Melissa. Ask you to bring them home safely as they're probably traveling right now, Brother Philip and Roger and the boys. Just uh, bring them home. Keep your angel charge over them. Bring them safely back home to us. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord bless thee and keep thee. Make his face to shine upon thee. Be gracious unto thee and give you peace in Jesus' name. Lord bless you. Appreciate you. Amen.